Well, of course, the most famous pine tar incident, the pine tar game, that involved the Yankees in 83, George Brett Bat. This time it's the neck of Michael Pineda, as you can see very easily over our shoulder. Yep. Hall of Famer Barry Larkin, Tim Kirchin. Is the ease in which you can identify that force the hand of John Farrell and the Red Sox? I think absolutely. I think that's the issue. Listen, when it's cold outside, there's, there are things that certain people do to try to create that tackiness. Be it pine tar, be it whatever it is, definitely it is used. And as a hitter, I really don't mind if the pitcher is using pine tar because he's going to throw strikes with it. I mean, as a, as a batter, sometimes you take that pine tar and kind of slide it up your, you know, up the barrel of your bat to create that tacky situation. So it happens throughout a baseball. I didn't have any problems with it, but the fact that it's just out in the wide open, that's the problem. <laughs> and it forced the umpire's hand, too. They see it. They touch it. Of course, they have to throw him out now. But I'm with Barry. A couple years ago, Joel Peralta got turned yep. in for pine tar. And a manager told me the next day that 30 starting catchers in the major leagues have pine tar on their shin guards for their pitcher. So on a cold night, they'll rub one off their shin guard, return it to the pitcher so he can get a grip. It's mostly about grip, although you can manipulate the ball that way. But I'm with Barry. You want a grip, you need a grip. He did force the hand. He did force the, <laughs> the hand. Socks, absolutely. <laughs> he certainly did. The suspension for Peralta back in June of 2012 was eight games. We'll see what baseball does with Michael Pineda. With Tim Kirchner and Barry Larkin, I'm Carl Ravitch.